well, the stock market was a little crazy again today, so we have the top five stock market news for this week and some upcoming catalyst for next week. These are the top five stocks that I'm personally watching out for this week, and it might be good for you to look out for them as well. Hi, Raylaners. Welcome back to Supergirl Investor, where we save the world and make you wealthy. Today, we have the top five stock market news of the day and this is a very big one. There was a lot of craziness within the world today as well as the stock market this past week. So there's a lot of opportunities for next week. As always, your time is very valuable. So I have the link in the descriptions below for all of the timestamps of each stock based on which stock you would like to learn more about. And as always, please leave a like and comment on this video what stock you would like me to talk about next. Now, if you would like to know when is the best time to buy and sell a stock, and I'm not just talking about for long-term investors, I'm talking also about for day traders, just check the link up above, up above my head somewhere in the stratosphere, because I have a video that will show you all of that, plus some high growth stocks that I'm very invested in. So it's time to start with this video. And without further ado, let's get started with stock number number one, which is going to be ticker symbol B-I-D-U. You know I have to talk about the Chinese stocks because there was a lot that happened with them. So we're going to talk about this crazy Goliath of a stock and how it could be delisted because of an SEC new rule, how there's something called blocks that it was sold off on. And of course, there are some Chinese regulations where they're cracking the whip on Chinese stocks. So we have a lot to cover with that. And and why it could be potentially on my watch list, the pros and cons, and of course the risks. So let's first talk about the US SEC. They adopted a law called the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act, which was passed by the former administration under Trump. Certain companies identified by the SEC will require auditing by a US watchdog. Basically, there's a third party US auditor that's going to audit not only Chinese companies, but any foreign country companies that trade on the NYSE. These companies will be required to submit certain documents to establish that they are not owned or controlled by a government entity or in a foreign jurisdiction. Chinese companies will have to name each board member who is a Chinese Communist Party official. The US regulator could stop the trading of securities that fall foul of its rules. So even though we've known about this since March, we did believe that the new administration was going to have more friends ties with the Chinese administration, as you could call it, or the Chinese government. Um, but that has not been the case, and that's a bit surprising for institutions. But wait, don't panic. If you have several shares in Baidu and many investors are afraid that it will be delisted, just remember that it's one of the largest platforms in China. So that means that there's a huge incentive for SEC to want to keep this stock on the NYSE to draw in more demand. But what if the worst of the worst happens and the stock is de- listed. So what happens is that you can still trade, you can still buy and sell, but it's going to be what's called OTC or over the counter. And many institutions will not be able to buy and sell once this happens. So retail traders, you will be able to buy and sell this stock, but institutional investors will not. So there will probably be a huge plummeting in the overall stock share price. Now, once it's over the counter, then the valuation can start to go back up. So if you do think that Baidu is a great stock, look at the fundamentals, do your own due diligence and see if even if it's over the counter, if the valuation meets the share price and not everything is lost. So let's look at one of the biggest scam Chinese stocks, which is called Luckin. And let's see how the price actually did over the counter. Last summer, Chinese coffee chain operator Luckin Coffee was delisted from the NASDAQ after the company revealed the fabrication of 2.2 billion yuan. $340 million in sales, which was fraudulent. The stock hit a 52 week low of 95 cents a share. Wowza. But shares rose even 
after going over the counter and closed at $8.64 each on Monday. So that's almost a 10x increase. Imagine if you had bought it at 95 cents per share. So even if the stock does announce that it's getting delisted, it has a lot of time to stay on the New York Stock Exchange and then move over to the OTC. So let's talk about Chinese regulations because that is also a huge pressure on this stock. Chinese technology companies are not only under pressure from the delisting threat abroad, but also concerns over a stricter regulations at home. Beijing has looked to rein in the power of technology giants and establish new rules in areas from financial technology to e-commerce, as we saw with Alibaba and their IPO that was unsuccessful. While the Chinese government's crackdown started with billionaire Jack Ma's empire, including the suspension of the mega IPO of Ant Group, there are signs that Beijing's targets could extend beyond Ant. So not only are they facing pressure on the US, not only are they facing pressure with the Chinese government, but they're also facing pressure with institutions, which is what's known as a block trade, which happened on Friday. So a block trade is essentially, in this case, a selling of stocks, of substantial selling of stocks within two parties if two parties agree to a set price. Black trade wipes $35 billion off stock values in one day, which was Friday. An extraordinary spree of black trades on Friday erased $35 billion from the values of stocks ranging from Chinese tech giants to U.S. media companies, mostly Chinese stocks. The unregistered stock offerings were said to be managed by banks including Goldman Sachs, ticker symbol GS, and Morgan Stanley, according to people familiar with the matter on behalf of one or more undisclosed shareholders. Some of the trades exceeded $1 billion from individual companies. Every stock involved triggered price strings involved in the high volume transactions while rattling some of their industry counterparts. So they took everything with them. All of the boats sank. It also spurred speculation among some traders of forced selling by a fund being liquidated. Chinese giants such as Baidu, Tencent and VIP shop were mostly affected. That was the final straw on Saturday and actually Baidu ended in the green on Friday once we had that massive uptick in the whole stock market in general on Friday between three and four. So what's going to happen for next week? Well, the stock is currently oversold at 206. Now it's at one of its prime support levels. So I would wait for a confirmation to see if you want to invest in this company. Of course, do your own due diligence. This is only for entertainment purposes only, but this is a fantastic company, great exposure to China. Now, if it does does go back down the next support level looks like it's at 190 and then there's not another support level until 130 so it could go down drastically more but again it's oversold so I do believe that it's going to rebound higher I think this was a panic sell what's happening in the stock market right now is a lot of institutions are using bots to automatically sell or buy stocks based off of limit price so they're trying to basically hedge against huge momentous drops in prices, which I believe is what happened here, especially after the block trades. So I'm going to keep this on my watch list for next week because I definitely think it's oversold and I would like to see a nice rebound. I'm going to wait for the confirmation because it could go lower. Stock number two, we have ticker symbol P-A-T-H, which is UiPath. This is a $35 billion automation software maker, and it just announced news on Friday of filing for an IPO. Now, if you would like me to do a deep dive on this, I'm definitely very interested in this because it does have to do with the healthcare sector as well. It's in several sectors and it has huge revenue growth. It's supposed to be a really great company. 
just comment down below that you would like me to do a deep dive on this and what I'm personally going to be doing. But for now, let's talk about the company, about the upcoming IPO, and I will tell you a little bit about what I'm doing. Oh, and there's some great news from SoFi about pre-IPOs that retail investors can get involved in very soon. UiPath, a software maker valued at $35 billion after a funding round this year, filed for an IPO showing revenue increased 81% year over year. The company in a filing Friday listed the size of its IPO as $1 billion dollars, a placeholder that could change when it sets terms for the share sale. The listing will be in the top tier of IPOs in an already record-setting year. Of the 408 companies that have raised a combined total of $141 billion in NYSE since January 1st, only 19 have hit or exceeded $1 billion mark. UiPath specializes in robotic process automation technology, software that helps companies save time and money by automating repetitive manual tasks such as entering data into spreadsheets. It competes with Automation Anywhere Inc., which is backed by SoftBank. So essentially, workers don't have to do monotonous paperwork anymore over and over and over. Instead, robots can do this and it's automated. The company, which started in Romania and is now headquartered in New York, this was six years ago, said in December that it is filed confidentially for an IPO. This is really a company that worked its way from the ground up from being in Romania with about 10 people to now what they are, which is a huge conglomerate into a multinational business in nearly 30 countries with $580 million in ARR or annual recurring revenue, generated a net loss of $92 million on revenue of $600 million. $608 million in the 12 months ending January 31st, the compared to a net loss of $520 million on revenue of $336 million a year earlier. So their net loss is narrowing. It burned less cash for the year ending January 31st, disclosing positive operating cash flow of $29 million compared to losing $359 million a year earlier. So that's excellent news. Basically what they're trying to do is have an end-to-end -end phase of fully automated enterprises where what can be automated is automated, enabling every employee to use, create, and benefit from the transformative power of automation to liberate the boundless potential of people. A fully automated enterprise is a digitally transformed enterprise. Combining the leading robotic process automation RPA platform with a full suite of capabilities that enables every organization to scale digital business operations at unprecedented speed. So if you just think about this, it is hyper automation and it is making sure that workers and robots are working together in tandem and they're doing it in the most efficient and productive way possible. This could be revolutionary for companies moving forward. So you're probably thinking, okay, that's wonderful. That's great. But there's no date on the IPO and it will probably be too high of a stock price when I invest in it. And that was true up until one day ago when SoFi decided to to help out retail investors in a big way. So SoFi is one of the investing apps that I have personally used for over a year now. I absolutely love it. It's a great digital wallet that helps with full shares, partial shares, and crypto. Now, they just announced yesterday that retail investors will be able to buy pre-IPO, and this is revolutionary. Now, they didn't disclose the date and it's going to be for a select number of IPOs, but I honestly can't wait. This will definitely change my IPO strategy. The IPO shares have historically been set aside for Wall Street's institutional investors or high net worth individuals because you needed at least $50,000 to invest pre-IPO prior to yesterday. Retail traders don't have a way to buy into newly invested companies until those shares begin actually trading on the exchange. By that time, the price has often gapped higher much higher. <laughs> Main Street will have access to investing in a way they wouldn't have before. It gives more access so people can build diversified portfolios. SoFi clients who have at least 
$3,000 in account value will be able to enter the amount of shares they want as a reservation. The app will alert them when it's time to confirm an order. So instead of $50,000, you just need through $3,000 or more in the app. Of course, use the link in the description below to get $50 after you invest in the SoFi app. Of course, it helps out the channel a little bit and I would be very grateful. In the same way as cryptocurrency, we disclose to people that these come with a higher degree of risk. So as I was saying, they do use cryptocurrency. I absolutely love SoFi because when I was doing my crypto tutorial, I invested a little bit into crypto and they actually gave me $50 back for it just for investing. So there's bonus is galore. But of course, crypto is very risky. IPOs are very risky. That's why I personally tend to use my risk management and not go into any IPOs. I just wait until the stock goes into its earnings report, at least its first earnings report, and then I decide whether I want to go in or not. But these two pieces of news are absolutely exciting. And if you want to get in on the pre-IPO, I hope that path will be able to be up for a pre-IPO on SoFi. But if it's not, there's many more IPOs that we're going to discuss on this channel that you will be able to invest in pre-IPO thanks to SoFi. But let's say that UiPath, let's forget about the pre-IPO. What am I going to do about it? As I said, normally for IPOs, I do not invest in them. Even after a week, I like to see the trends. I like to use chart patterns. I like to make sure that their earnings reports are very good and they have consistent growth year over year. So I'm just going to wait until their next earnings report and then I'm going to decide what to do. Of course, I'll update you. Stock number three, we have a new stock that just got on the market, very hot. It's ticker symbol SPFR. This is a SPAC that's merging with JAWS Spitfire, and I am incredibly excited about this. If you are a Tesla or SpaceX bull, this is for you. Also, if you're involved with ARK K, this is for you as well. So next week, there's a catalyst coming up for this, and we will talk about that as well. So let's look at the news articles about why I'm so bullish on this company. Shares of blank check company SPFR are on the move Thursday morning as investors are getting a better sense of its planned tie-up with Velo3D. SPFR stock was up 3% in pre-market trading. SPFR came public in December, raising $345 million in an IPO on the expectations it would focus on growth-oriented consumer technology and related businesses. Velo3D specializes in tech for 3D metal print Printing, boasting of its ability to manufacture previously difficult geometrics and forms, especially in space exploration. Elon Musk was interested in buying Velo 3D, though the tech maker didn't want to sell it. That's when you know it's good. I also found this very interesting. The ARC Q Kathy Woods Investment ETF targets 3D printing firms. That fund recently took a position in Velo 3D, buying over 700,000 shares of SPF. FR stock and SpaceX is actually already a customer. The 3D printer's propriety full stack 3D mental printing solution enables the production of mission critical components for space rockets, jet engines, fuel delivery systems, and energy production with better performance at faster speed and lower cost than traditional methods. Now it's used for the Falcon 9, Kathy Woods uses it, and an upcoming catalyst is that Kathy Woods is going to announce her Arc X any moment now, and that is da, 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 about space exploration. And this could be a stock that's on the list. Now that would be wonderful because it would be exposure to SpaceX. I think right now this stock is undervalued in my opinion. I think it has much more room to grow. And if Kathy Woods wants to take it under her wing, which may or may not happen, again, do your own due diligence. But I think there's a good chance that it will happen. If you want to invest in this, I would just make sure you do it on a dip. But I think this is a great long-term play. Space exploration is supposed to skyrocket within the next five to 10 years. Stock 
number four. If you are listening into this today on Saturday, then it is ticker symbol BFT. If not, then it is going to be ticker symbol PSFE. It leads me to why I'm so bullish on this company and why it's set for my watch list. BFT said late Thursday its shareholders approved its proposed $9 billion merger with Paysafe Group. The newly combined company will operate as Paysafe and start trading on the NYSE under the symbol PSFE on March 31st. As with all mergers, usually on merger day, there is a huge volatility within the stock price. We saw this with ChargePoint. It went all the way down, but we also saw this with a lot of other SPACs that went all the way up after their merger. So it just honestly depends on the luck of the draw. I would not recommend to buy it on the day of the merger. I would wait until there is an exponential sell-off or an exponential run and then reevaluate see what your buy targets are and see what price you would like to get in. This is really huge news. I'm so excited about this because this is a long time coming and just wait for a dip or a pullback after the merger. They, there could be a huge sell-off, which is a good time to get in, especially if you're a long-term investor. Paysafe is a leading specialized payments platform. Its core purpose is to enable businesses and consumers to connect and transact seamlessly through industry-leading capabilities in payment processing, digital wallet, and online cash solutions. With over 20 years of online payment experience and annualized transaction volume of US $92 billion in 2020 and approximately 30 400 employees located in 12 plus global locations. Paysafe connects businesses and consumers across 70 payment types in over 40 currencies around the world. So this is a global fintech leader. It's with digital wallets. Again, this is a huge industry in the next five to 10 years. So pay attention to this one. Delivered through an integrated platform, PaySafe solutions are geared toward mobile initiated transactions, real-time analytical analytics, and the convergence between brick and mortar and online payments. Now, a lot of investors have been waiting for this moment like crazy. They have been having their popcorn, and now that they're on the buy the rumor, sell the news, there's probably going to be a very big sell-off, so I would just wait until that and then buy in once there's a confirmation. Stock number five, we have ticker symbol RH, and I have to tell you, I am so excited about this company. When I was listening to the earnings report conference call, they have a zero marketing strategy, and yet they were able to make the pandemic one of their most successful years yet and they're developing globally. I am so excited for this. Plus they have over five new upgrades in price targets. So let's get into the news and why I'm watching for this next week. RH stock is popping more than 5% early Thursday following yet another strong quarter from the home furnishings retailer. So this is a very high end retailer and one of its huge advantages um, to its competitors, which would be ticker symbol W or Wayfair, which is an online uh, furnishing retailer, is that they are high end and they pretty much keep their inventory in stock to meet the demands that they have. They have a really good balance between that. So it is much more efficient and saves a lot of time. Its forecast promised more growth to come earned $130.2 million or $4.31 a share in its fourth quarter. Revenue rose 22% year over year to $812.4 million. Analysts were looking for EPS of $4.75 on revenue of $797.4 million. Looking ahead, it sees revenue climbing 15 to 20% this year from ongoing strength. The company noted it had gained significant market share with demand up 30 6% in the fourth quarter, accelerating to 73% in February and 96% in the first two weeks of March. I have to tell you, when the earnings report was coming out, the CEO is very 
wonderful to listen to. If you are an entrepreneur or have a business, he is just amazing and brilliant. And I really just wanted to say thank you for his vision because he is trying to disrupt and innovate as the leader of this, the high-end furniture space, because not only is he going to, into high-end furniture, he's plowing through that, but he's also trying to create this global luxury band, which we We'll get into in a moment. While plenty of investor scrutiny has surrounded pandemic winners as the economy begins to reopen, investors are likely taking heart from RH's upbeat outlook. A lot of investors have thought that this is a good at-home play, but it's also a good recovery play as well. Along with predicting an ongoing increase in sales on top of a blockbuster 2020, the company plans to open four new design galleries with eateries and wine bars in North America this year including Aspen. It will open its first RH guest house in New York City this fall, and its expansion overseas to the UK and France is slated for 2022. So they're trying to do something no one has ever done before. They're trying to make luxury guest house the best that anyone has ever seen them. And with their brand, with their following, it's really good. And I'm expecting really good numbers from this. So they have a 20% upside coming in for them at a price target of $675. Price targets were raised by Loop Capital, which maintained a buy rating at $600. Wells Fargo maintained an overweight rating and raised the price to $575. Bofa remains a bull with a buy at $650 a share. So we're seeing a lot of growth for this company. I think it's a great recovery play, especially if they're opening many brick and mortar. I think it's a good chance to go into a luxury brand. It's disrupting the real estate space. And another company that's also disrupting the real estate space that has 5G potential is ticker symbol. V-I-E-U. Now I'm very bullish on both of these, but if you would like to hear more about V-I-E-U, which are smart windows, then please comment down below that you would like to learn more about it. I would love to hear your response or hear your back and forth. So why am I watching this and what am I going to do? I think that the earnings report was really great and I think that institutional investors are very bullish on this stock. So I'm going to wait for it to cool off. It has gone up very very exponentially, but this is a very solid company. If you want something fundamentally strong with a great balance sheet, with a great CEO that's innovating, that's scaling up globally, then this is a great long-term stock to hold. So again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to use the SoFi link in the description to get your $50. Thank you so much for watching the top five stock news of the day. Please leave a like if you found this helpful and of course share with your investor friends. Please let me know if you liked these news articles and what stock you were putting on your watch list. Thank you so much for listening. Please invest more and have fun investing. Save the world while doing it and we'll help you be wealthy. Bye, Rayliners.